I left off uh, on this second example uh, here, also from quiz two, if killing puppies is wrong and killing pigs is wrong, killing pigs is not wrong, killing puppies, therefore killing puppies is not wrong. And what you see is that this is an example of the valid argument form modus tollens. Again, we're not concerned with the actual truth or falsity of this claim or this claim or even this claim. What we're concerned with in the end is if P1 and P2 are true, does C have to be true? And it does, given that conditionals assert necessary and sufficient conditions about their parts in the following ways. So that's a review for a video too. But what I wanna do in this video is then talk about some other valid forms and invalid forms. And then uh, in a final video, I'll go through an example from the study guide for exam one. That I'll save for the fourth video. So we've gone through these two forms, modus ponens and modus tollens. Why don't we talk about these two invalid forms that in some ways uh, can be confused with the valid forms, modus ponens and modus tollens. So if you remember, modus ponens goes like this, A and B, A, therefore, B, that's valid. Modus tollens says if A, then B, not B, therefore, not A, that's also valid. Now, there are two invalid forms that look somewhat similar. First, all, both they look somewhat similar because they both start with a, a conditional, or they both have a conditional as one of the premises. This one is called fallacy of affirming the consequent. Uh, what you have here is instead of, like in modus ponens, you see, What's happening is A is asserted as a second premise. Here you have B asserted as a second premise. But conditionals only assert in one direction uh, sufficiency. That is, A is sufficient for B, but that doesn't mean B is sufficient to bring about A. So in other words, that's what's happened here is that, um, you know, if we were to say what's, you know, what went wrong is this person is asserting that that B is enough to bring about A, but that's not what this conditional says. This conditional simply says that if we have A, we know that B is true, but the converse does not follow. It doesn't follow that B is enough to bring about A. So this is an invalid form. Secondly, let's talk about the fallacy of denying the antecedent. Now, this looks somewhat like modus tollens because, again, it starts as uh, with a conditional, um, but then asserts that the antecedent is not the case and concludes that the consequent is therefore not the case. But again, this is an invalid form. Why? Because what we learned when we learned uh, about conditionals here is that this asserts that B is necessary for A. That means we know if B is false, that A also has to be false, assuming this conditional is true. But this, again, assumes a kind of flipped version of that. If A, then B does not assert that A is necessary for B. So A being false doesn't guarantee that B is false. So if A, then B, not A, therefore not B, is an invalid form called the fallacy of denying the antecedent. Now, finally, uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you want to review this material, I'm going to post this document uh, up on, once I'm done with the videos, up on Canvas. But the book also goes through these forms at the end of chapter one, uh, at the end of chapter one F. So if you look at the pages uh, 
38 through 41 in the Baronet textbook, it goes through each of the six forms that I've uh, gone through here. I've gone through four of the forms so far, but in total, the book goes through six forms. I'll go through um, the two more forms and then also deal with one from the study guide uh, in the next video.